Hi, welcome to the 10-minute video summary of the message that was shared at Henrietta Christian Fellowship on the 28th of June, 2020. My name is Don Bolt. I'm the senior pastor there, and I'd like to share with you over the next 10 minutes just some of the highlights from this morning's message. All right, we're in a series about what did Jesus tell us, and we're in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, and we're looking at uh, verse 9, uh, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. That's the only place that that specific word for peacemaker exists, but peace Obviously, the New Testament, the whole Bible is filled uh, with scriptures about peace. And it says, they will be called the sons of God. Luke 6.35 says, but love your enemies and do good. There's a connection here uh, about between righteousness and peace. And lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great. And you will be, what, sons of the Most High. For he himself is, un is kind to ungrateful and evil men. All right. Uh, Albert Barnes, just share it real quickly, says that uh, those who uh, strive to prevent contention, strife, and war, who use their influence to reconcile opposing parties, Parties, who prevent lawsuits and hostilities in families and neighborhoods. Everyone uh, may do some of this, but you know what? No one is more like God than the one who does it. All right. And children of God, just that, you know, if you resemble God, if, you, if your spirit is like his, all right, then, you know, you're worthy to be called his sons. But more than that, you know, this, this idea of being a peacemaker is beyond this, okay? Because uh, it, it's, it says that peace uh, is a, a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And, and that, that uh, fruit comes with some instruction. Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And the law doesn't speak against those things and it goes on to say those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires all right if we live by the spirit let us also walk by the spirit now it says let's not become boastful challenging one another envying one another life is so filled with that these days all right and Psalm uh, 85 13 says that righteousness goes before the Lord and it makes his footsteps into a way so God is, uh, is, is demonstrating to us, all right, uh, through, even through our own salvation, okay, he's demonstrating to us this, this way in which we should walk, and he's creating a path in front of us that's well-worn, all right? And so um, we receive the peace of God from the God of peace, all right? Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That's the beginning of it. And the peace of God, which surpasses comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The shalom of God is inexpressible. It is something that is way beyond all of us. And I know every time I try to express it, I just, I just desire to know this more. Uh, you know, it, it's just the, 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 the peace of God. It's beyond our comprehension. So being a peacemaker, you're making something that's beyond your comprehension because God is at work in you to produce it. All right, so uh, it goes on to tell us that the, that, uh, the peace of God, which has a comprehension will guard our hearts and lives in Christ Jesus. But then it goes on to say, the things that you've learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things. What what do you practice? What do we practice every day? All right, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. All right, so uh, we have examples set before us of, of, of how to live this life that God calls us to. And if we do, it says the God of peace will be with us. Peacemakers have God's peace, okay? And what they have, it far exceeds the person who brings it, okay? John 14, 27, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful, okay? He says, I, I give you peace in, in a way that's unlike anything you receive from the world. Now you have a responsibility. Guard your heart. Don't let your heart be fearful or afraid, uh, you know, or troubled, okay? John 16, 33, these things I've spoken to you, that in me you'll have peace. All right, he's in the world, you got tribulation, but understand, I overcame that world that's causing that tribulation. So if you have the peace of God, you can invoke it. All right, the Apostle Paul did this frequently in his letters to uh, the, the churches. You know, a grace and a to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's Romans 7, 1, 7, okay? Uh, you know, we can invoke peace. We can we can give voice, voke. You know, we can, we can give word. We can speak uh, peace in ways that, that God uses powerfully, okay? And so a peacemaker, according to Zodiades and his lexical aids to the New Testament, is one who makes peace in others, having first received the peace of God in his own heart not simply one who makes peace between parties. So what are we helping people overcome? What are we overcoming as peacemakers? Tribulation, unhappiness, fear, worry, anxiety, contention, confusion, all right? And I put out cetera because there's more. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, 33 tells us that our God is not a God of that confusion, all right? So it tell, he tells us to turn away from evil and do good and seek peace and pursue it. Remember that relationship between righteousness and peace, all right? And uh, 1 Peter 3, 8 through 17 tells us to be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, and not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. 
For the one who desires life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. He must, what, turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. See this relationship between righteousness and peace. I hear this call, no justice, no peace, but I'm telling you what, no righteousness, no peace. All right, the, the righteousness and peace of this relationship and they, they walk together, all right? And so uh, it goes on to say that the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears attend to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You know what? If you're gonna be a peacemaker, you're gonna to have to trust God for your reward and trust that his eyes are the ones that you care if they're on you. It's making peace is the outworking of the reconciliation that was accomplished by Jesus on the cross for us by the shedding of his blood. Romans 5, 1 says, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Colossians 3, 15 tells us how to work, walk that out. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Are you experiencing the peace of Christ? And, and with this new heart, you know, um, what I'm about to say or do, can I say or do it in the name of the Lord? You know, that, that thing I'm going to say, the thing I'm going to do, you know, it's I'm, I'm upset with you uh, because you did something, that, that word that I, I'm so tempted to speak. Can I say in Jesus' name, you know, at the end of it? You know, it's like, excuse me, you know, you're, you're in my way in Jesus' name. You know, like, excuse me, but, uh, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't like you in Jesus' name. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, uh, you know, those, those, the, the insults, you know, the, you know you, somebody does something wrong, you, you got this choice of the word to drop on them. Can you say in Jesus' name? Because peacemakers, you know, the word that they speak, they speak in Jesus' name. In fact, everything. All right. So, um, James three seventeen through eighteen says the wisdom that comes from above is first pure, pure and peaceable, and it goes on, and it says the seed. Uh, whose fruit is righteousness, again, related to peace, is sown in peace by those who make peace. All right? All right, so if you want to see more righteousness, understand something. The word that you speak, the actions that you do, all right, they are uh, those which then contribute to uh, the, to peace, okay? And um, and the seed, you know, this this word that's in you from the Holy Spirit, from God, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's fruit uh, is, is righteousness and peace, all right? Colossians uh, 3.17, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, okay? Uh, very powerful scripture in my life in, uh, as a young Christian and still today. Romans 12, 17 through 21, never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what's right in the sight of all men. If uh, possible, as much depends on you, be at peace with all men and don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. All right, bless those who curse you, okay? Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse, all right? Uh, that idea that, you know, whatever, you know, I say, well, there's a whole section of Psalms that's imprecatory Psalms where David is asking God to destroy his enemies. But in the New Testament, having received the benefits of the blood of Jesus Christ and the reconciliation that we have with God, we're called uh, to, to something higher, uh, which is to be people that, uh, that are willing to love even in those situations, all right? And, and to speak peace, all right? So, um, yeah, love, peace, and doing good. This righteousness and peace have kissed each other. All right, in Psalm 85, 13. All right, Luke 6, 27 tells us this. All right, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. If you're going to be a peacemaker. That's, that's part of, of how it's done. All right, uh, Romans 13, 10 says, love does no wrong to a neighbor. You know, I'm sitting out in the yard and, you know, I'm surrounded by my neighbors and, and really, you know, trying to keep a good relationship with, with all my neighbors, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, you don't do wrong to a neighbor. You know, I felt like I'd done wrong to a neighbor. I went and asked his forgiveness. All right. So First Thessalonians 5.15, always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. All right. Uh, peacemakers do that. All right. And finally, in Galatians 6, 9 through 10, let us not lose heart in doing good. All right. For in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. While we have opportunity, which is now, okay, let us do good to all people and especially to those who are the household of the faith. So to all people, all right, to the marginalized, uh, to, the, to the persecuted, to the, uh, to the person who is just maybe somebody you don't even like. All right, but to, to do good to all, all right, to be a peacemaker uh, in the lives of those who, that we touch. Uh, you know, I remember there's a lady I used to visit her in the hospital, and uh, and God taught me how to minister to her in ways that, that brought her peace. And her family said, we call you the human sedative. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was uh, the kind of compliment that most of us look for, but I understood, you know, yeah, God was ministering peace through me to this person. God desires to minister peace through you. He desires for you to be a peacemaker in Jesus' name. And so with that, I'm going to say God bless you, and we'll see you next time on the 10-minute video summary.